Hey guys, Charles here from Hulse Boots, and today we're doing a review on what is probably the most popular and hyped up boot from Nike right now, the Nike Phantom GX DF Elite. All right guys, so as you've probably already know by now, we're looking at the Nike Phantom GX DF Elite. And it's been about four months since I've done a review on the GX. I did the low cut in the Link colorway. And for this pair, I went with the DF. I kind of wanted to see how it was. I kept my normal size nine US because I had real, no real issues with the low cut version. And I did end up going with the Nike Ready Pack, I believe is what it's called, the newest Nike pack. It's like black and red. Now, I haven't really liked too many colors of the GX, but this is definitely one that I think is actually pretty cool looking. That neon yellow, the neon yellow and the white pack that Holland's been wearing a lot, I just kind of find ugly. So I'm glad I waited to get these until now, or at least I'm glad I waited to get this model until now in a cool colorway. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the other one out. And then a cool detail on this bag here, and I can't remember if it's how it was with the Link pack, but. It has the same exact pattern that's on the grip knit and you know Nike likes to do this with their boots sometimes. It looks pretty cool overall for a Nike bag. It's definitely pretty sick, but you know, just the same drawstring bag we always get. So if we wanna go in and talk about these boots just a little bit before I get them on feet and get my full review in and test them out. It has a grip knit and what's kind of interesting about grip knit is it's the new technology from Nike since the GX drop. It was also on the Phantom Luna but the difference is, if you see here, you can kind of see that knit texture or underneath, yeah, underneath the boots, but it just feels super, super slick and not really super waxy, just a tiny bit waxy. But if you go with the Phantom GX, you can really see, if it focuses here, the knit pattern, and you can feel that knit pattern alongside with a lot of waxiness. So it feels like two different kinds of grip knit, almost the same idea, but just executed differently, which doesn't make that a bad thing because I still actually really like the Phantom Luna and the grip knit on it, but it's just kind of weird that there's some differences there. So maybe I'll have to compare the two models at some point. And then the other thing that's different, well, not different, but a thing that they brought back is the ghost lace system on the DF boots. So the low cut boots do not have them. And we first saw the ghost lace system on the Phantom Vision back in 2019, I wanna say these dropped, 2018, 2019. Uh, I never really wore these. I put these on once just to see if they fit me and they did, so I got them, but um, I've never tried the ghost lacing system before. I feel like it's a very flawed system because at the end of the day, if you're making contact with your laces, they're not really affecting your shot. Maybe it'll cause you a little bit of discomfort if you tie a really big knot and the ball hits the knot and then your foot, but I don't know. I just don't like not being able to access my laces. I'm not someone who prefers a laceless boot over laced boots and it just kind of feels like a similar concept, but. Not quite the same because you'll still have decent lockdown, but just kind of something to talk about there. The sole plate was also something that's interesting with these new TriStar studs. And you know, they're a little bit um, claw shaped. Oh, not my camera there. A little claw shaped they're coming out and just, it's kind of hard to explain, but they're not bad studs overall on turf. I haven't worn the GX on grass yet, so I'm definitely gonna do that with these. And then another thing that always caught me kind of weird was this back stud pattern where I feel like they should have put these studs here and the conical studs forward, but again, what do I know? <laughs> and you know, I also remember the sole plate being super flexible and not as structured as most boots are, so just something else I'll maybe try to do again, but that's pretty much all I really have in terms of unboxing these. I'm sure a lot of you guys know a lot about the GX at this point. It's been out for, I wanna say eight months, maybe almost nine now. I think it came out during the World Cup, so it's been a long time and you know, I really do think that these are gonna be fun to try out and it's definitely a sleek colorway. However, one thing I really dislike about the GX and the DF models, especially when it's like this black black knit on the red, it reminds me of American football boots and I hate how those look, they just disgust me. And I've never been one to like high cut boots, including Superflies, so, you know, that's one thing I'm not looking forward to is wearing these and just how they'll look, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's not gonna be the end of the world, I'll, I'll get over it and, and I need to get over myself at that point. But, you know, definitely excited to try these out. I'm gonna leave you guys here um, for, I don't know, 10 seconds or less after this is over and then we'll jump into the rest of the review. I plan on testing them for hopefully a week, at least four, five, six training sessions. 
and so I can really get a feel and give you guys a good idea. And then I'm also going to compare it to the low cut model and see if there's any real difference if this like ghost lace system and this DF collar is really that big of a deal. All right, so it's been about two weeks since I unboxed them. I definitely wore these boots a decent amount. I, I put the time in on these. I really wanted to get a second look at the GX since I wore the low cut variation four or five months ago now. And I have to say I am maybe not super impressed, but my opinion has definitely changed a bit more on these. Maybe not the DF version or this collared version, but if I had a low cut version now, I think I would throw it into my rotation. These are definitely boots that I've come to like a lot more. I just am not a fan of the collar. And if I do, well, when I do an AG test of these boots, I'll get them in the low and then I think I'll probably throw them into the rotation because I actually do like these boots a lot, which is something that for me, putting a pair of boots into the rotation that I'm reviewing doesn't really happen often. I think it's only maybe happened once so far since I started reviewing boots. With that said, we're gonna jump right into the sole plate. <laughs> Now this sole plate is a sole plate that I said I didn't mind on turf last time I wore the low cut version several months ago. And I had a, a similar experience, but I just felt like these TriStar studs were gripping the ground a little bit better. And if I show you here, you can really just see like that claw shape, how, they, how they're a bit more like pronged. Not an aggressive prong, but like a little bit more of a claw, like I said in the unboxing. And I felt that a bit more when I was playing on turf the one time I did. And I played the full game on, on turf with these still, but I could just feel a lot when I was cutting, turning, everything like that. It felt like it gripped the ground a little bit more. And even when I was backpedaling, I felt that they should have swapped these two studs. And I'll throw the boots back up here. Like, if you see, they have these conical ones in the back. And I want these flip flopped because you have the, the four TriStar studs up here in the front. And I just figured they would they would flip that. So I don't know if that was the issue when I was backpedaling. Let me know if you guys have had that issue of, you know, catching your studs on the back with with the GX or with other boots. But it was just the first time I've really experienced that with a Nike boot. And I know these these are FG boots, and a lot of the time people say you have to wear FG on FG and turf on turf or AG on turf. But I've never really had that problem before. So definitely we'll be picking up an AG pair to do review on at some point. And then maybe that's just the way to go with this with this particular Nike boot. So. We'll see about that, but that's pretty much all I have for the sole plate. Other than those issues, it still performed very well. It's still more of a uh, flimsy sole plate, if you can see this here, and it just bends super easy. So maybe I would like some more rigidity from that as well. Um, now, to be fair, a lot of the boots I do wear, especially like the 11 Pro, they, they don't really have sturdy or very rigid sole plates, but when I wear Nike boots, I kind of just like a bit more rigidity, so. You know, maybe I'm being too picky, but that's just kind of kind of my thoughts for those. Next on our list is gonna be the upper. So right off the bat with this ghost lacing system, it's actually a little different than I thought. I never actually wore this. Now I do have a few pairs of Phantom Visions, but they're just in the collection. I have yet to test them out yet. So hopefully I'll do that in the future, but just this ghost lacing system, um, it's deeper than I thought. I thought that the laces, there's only like two or three crosses in the laces, if that makes sense. But it actually goes way down into the, the boot here where normal laces would go. But still you have no access to them. You can't really tell what's going on down there if the laces get twisted or tangled up. There's a few times where I actually got the top laces all tangled and twisted and I was able to get it undone. But if that happens towards the inside, it, you know, I think it's gonna be a nightmare and it's not really easy to loosen these boots up either. Now you can slip them on your feet. It just takes a second and getting them off your feet is more than takes a second. It is very, very hard to get these off. It requires a lot of effort. So, I mean, you can do it fairly fast, but I'm telling you, you gotta stick your fingers in there, try to pry your foot out and it's just, it's just a nightmare. So, um, and like I said earlier in the unboxing as well, I just am not a fan of hiding the laces. I like to see my laces. If I'm wearing a laceless boot, it's a laceless boot. But if I have laces, I want access to them. and not having access to them just kind of, I don't know, throws me off. So maybe I'll do a thing where I even cut the lace cover off or something like that, um, which a lot of people will hate me for, but I'm just not a big fan of it. I'm not a fan of it because of the performance aspect. I don't think it has a negative impact on performance, but from a from an opinion point and from my personal, uh, personal standpoint, I just, I would prefer it not to have it. Now, maybe they brought this back because the Phantom Vision was like a, a fan favorite and I know a lot of people still wear the Phantom Vision and still talk about how good it was and people even say the Phantom Vision 2 is better than the 1 but just not a fan just not a fan of that ghost lacing system 
Now with the grip knit, it's still something I like a lot. I'll still never understand what the difference is between the Luna and the GX grip knit is. Other than the Luna feels like the grip knit and like all the knit fibers and materials. Like if we zoom in here, uh, oh, it'll show. You can see all like the weaving and the threading of like the knit material and you can feel that and it feels waxy. Whereas the Phantom Luna here just feels waxy without any, it feels like, like a smooth waxy, if that makes sense. So I don't know why that's like that. Um, I almost prefer the Luna's grip knit even more than this, but it's still a good material nonetheless. And you really do get a lot of control with the ball with this. You can do a lot more. Now, if you were wearing a boot without the grip knit, you could still do the same things, but I feel like it just really helps assist, you know, gripping the ball. And if you want to put an outside the foot pass on it, and I'll throw some of the B-roll up, but I was trying to demonstrate that by using the outside of my left foot, I want to say. And I had a case of the yips this whole session, so the entire B-roll is going to look really bad, but I just couldn't do anything right. But I do feel like it, you have a lot of control with the grip knit, and I do think it's a material that helps. Is it a game changer? I don't think so, but it allows you to do a bit more and you know, 99.99% of us aren't pros and can't do the things they can, but using materials like Gribnet, I think maybe enhances that a little bit and helps give us a little bit more of an advantage. With that, we're gonna move on to size and fit. So with the GX, I went with my normal size nine in Nike and I did the same with the low cut version. However, there is a little bit of room in the toe. I do like how these are a lot more rounded than the Phantom GT was. Unfortunately, I don't have a GT at all in my collection to show you, but the GT felt a lot more pointed and I just didn't like the GT for that. These are a bit more rounded, but there's still a little bit of space. Could I go down to an eight and a half? Potentially, I don't think I would do it in the DF because the DF feels a lot more wrapped on your foot and hard to get on, hard to get off. And if it's taking a little bit away from the width of the boot, if I go down half a size, I don't think I could do it in the DF. Now with the low cut, potentially, maybe I'll try it in the future and put a pair on and see how they feel, but you can get away with going through normal size. And honestly, I've always had an issue of floating between a half a size. So if you wear a nine in Vapors, Tiempos, whatever else on the Nike market right now, you can just get that same size in here. So whatever your normal size is in Nike boots, get the same size with these, I would recommend. The feel in these are pretty decent as well. I like that the grip knit is thin enough to still give you a really quality feel of the ball, regardless of where you're connecting with, your, with the ball on your feet. And the comfortability was decent. I did have some pain on the bottom of my feet and on the arches, and I think that was because of the boots. Now, I did take a few days off, probably think five days, um, in the last two weeks of testing these, just doing other things. And uh, I put them back on and they hurt again. So again, it went away, but it's just something to, to note that maybe the break in time isn't as quick on these as some other boots are. And if we talk about durability, I wore these boots probably eight to 10 hours. So about the normal time I do when testing boots. No signs of sole separation, no signs of tear in the grip knit. You know, I wasn't playing a lot of games in these or playing pickup a lot. So I wasn't really getting a lot of contact, a lot of like my foot getting stepped on and everything like that. But Better than most boots have done, I will say. Now, I don't know anybody who has a pair of GXs. Personally, none of my friends do, so or at least that I play with, so I don't know how much they like the GX or how well the durability is and wearing them every single day, so I can't help you with that, but for starters, it's great. It's a lot better than most of these other boots I've seen so far. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Now, the final rating is an 8.1. That'll put us at a B minus. I do like these boots a lot and they've definitely grown on me. Now, I still prefer the low cut version. I still think that I wanna try the AG pair because of the way these studs are situated in the back and how I said I wanted them flipped. But still overall, a decent pair of boots. I think if they were properly broken into, they would be great. And yeah, that's all I have. I really wanna get an AG pair. I really want to test them out in low cut again. And I might even try going down half a size to an eight and a half as well to see if that will help this, the fit and the snug. I don't really think it will. I think it'll just cause more pain than it's worth, but just something I kind of want to try. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you like this video or you like reviews, please make sure to check out the rest of our YouTube for all the other reviews and videos and helpful tech specs that we have done. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next review.